Hello, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our next session uh, here on the tech and innovation stage. Uh, welcome back, or welcome. Uh, next up, we have a session that is brought to you by Legends. Uh, they're an agency, of course, that specializes in delivering solutions across the planning, sales, and hospitality service areas uh, with a real focus on elevating the guest experience from food and drink to customer retail environments, always raising the bar on guest expectations. And here this afternoon to discuss a particularly new exciting Legends project in Los Angeles and, and what the guest experience of the future will look like, uh, we've got a terrific panel. We've got the Chief Technology Officer at SoFi Stadium, the new stadium and entertainment district in Hollywood Park that will open next year as the new home of the Los Angeles Rams and Los Angeles Chargers. So please welcome Scarpy Hedison. Joining Scarpy is Legends Senior Vice President of Technology, Brandon McNulty, and keeping order over the next half hour. Also from Legends, Legends International Senior Vice President of Planning, Martin Jennings. And I've been, and you know, I've been a little bit premature there because what I was meant to do was tee up this video, after which they'll be on this stage. This is the LA we know. The hidden gems. The people that make this city live. Breathe and jump. RLA is a place of boundless creativity, excitement, a city always inventing, reinventing. A 200 year old city that's just getting started. This place, Stan Kroenke's vision of the future, is going to be the center of it all. global destination, an icon of LA. It's all going to be right here. With cuisine as diverse as LA's culture. Stay at a world-class hotel right in the heart of the action, where it's more than just dinner and drinks, it's community. Live the LA lifestyle, where local designers share the streets with high-profile brands. A premier destination with live music for today's top artists. Campus-style offices designed for entertainment, media, and tech companies to create and innovate. When it comes to enjoying LA's outdoors, this place is a natural. And floats it up. Something we've been waiting for. Touchdown! Pro football back in LA. A new home. Electrifying! For our two NFL teams. Dazzling talent! A place where we'll make history together. We'll make you proud, LA. Here, we'll celebrate the biggest events. Remarkable! Biggest moment of the year. This is where we'll come together, the city. Los Angeles. The OC. West Hollywood. Santa Monica. Long Beach. Inglewood. 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 And host the world. A place to gather, play, explore, and dream. Touchdown, Los Angeles. After all, that's what we do best. Welcome to Hollywood Park. Uh, badly introduced, uh, but now we can get started with the panel. So please welcome uh, Brandon, Scarpy, and Martin. Good afternoon, everybody. So, Brandon and Scarpy, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Let's start off with some uh, background to, to, to your uh, careers and your involvement in the scheme. So, Scarpy, tell us a little bit about what you do on the Laysed scheme on SoFi Stadium. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm the Chief Technology Officer. I've been uh, with the project for about uh, two and a half years. Um, uh, prior to that, I spent uh, 18 years at the Walt Disney Company. I'm a computer scientist by trade, but spent uh, the majority of my time at Disney building products and technology for, for consumers. Okay. And Brandon, how about you? 
Uh, thanks, Martin. Um, I'm Senior Vice President of Technology for Legends. We were hired by Mr. Kroenke in support of uh, not only uh, building the project out uh, from an owner's representation standpoint, but also from a sales standpoint. So I support Scarpy on uh, technology and, and all of that in the background. Um, I'm a military trained uh, nuclear engineer by uh, background um, and spent a little bit of time uh, as CTO for the trackside division of NASCAR International Speedway Corporation before being recruited to come help SCARP with uh, this project. Okay, and SCARP, how long have you been involved in the project and where was it at when you, uh, you got involved? Yeah, so uh, like I said, just over two and a half years. It was uh, early days of the construction um, when when we uh, came on board, um, the the uh, the project really got rolling uh, in uh, 2016. I think it was October. Was the was the groundbreaking, uh, and I was on board in February of 17, um, and you know really sort of starting to get involved with the design of the technology system, the design of the infrastructure, um, working with with legends and understanding. Um, uh, the construction pro process and, and, and what are the things that we wanted to influence in the design and the build of the stadium, specifically uh, A, for guest experience, but also for technical operations and, and what the building would be like to live with, if you will, from an ownership standpoint uh, going forward. And how developed was the whole thinking around technology and fan engagement when you came on board? Well, I, I think... Um, a lot of uh, a lot of the the pieces that have been installed and and tremendous uh, uh, tremendously well designed building and, and project and I think from a foundational standpoint we had pretty much everything that we needed in the project and a lot of the des the, the thinking from a guest experience side our was was sort of more on the physical side, mm -hmm. i.e. Uh, thinking about. Uh, uh, the spaces, uh, thinking about the premium nature of those spaces. And what we started focusing on is like, how does technology start uh, uh, augmenting, if you will, that guest experience that was sort of designed from a physical standpoint? And how do we sort of pair that with a technology layer, both on digital as well as uh, in stadium that sort of amplifies what, what the vision is around this project? Yeah. Uh, and Legends uh, had obviously influenced the research to define what the project was and the development of the project We're managing that on site uh, for ownership. But in terms of Brandon's involvement and getting Legends into the technology space, how did that come about on the, on the project? Well, I think it was a realization uh, early on as we're going through this. It, we, we continue to see technology become a, a larger portion of the construction budget in all of these projects. Uh, and we, we realized very quickly um, that, you know, one person can't do it all. And so we needed to make sure that we augmented uh, Scarpy and his uh, team early in the process to, to be involved in that. And as we're managing the distinct workflows, whether it's uh, the steel and, and the structural components of the building, we also need to pay careful attention to all of the technology components um, because they're critical to the guest experience uh, uh, after opening. Um, you can have the roof up, but you need to light up the lights, you need to make sure the videos work, uh, and you need to make sure that uh, the consumers, uh, the fans, have everything that they're expecting as they go in. I, I think one of the things that I certainly didn't appreciate coming in is, is that, you know, just from a sequencing standpoint on big construction projects like this, um, uh, from a design perspective, uh, to selecting the general contractor, then to to bidding out and selecting the various subcontractors, um, and and how you go through that process, and and how important it is for you to be in the middle of that decision making uh, from an ownership standpoint, um, so that uh, you are looking after the right things in that sequencing, um, so that you can influence decisions that are being made. Uh, from v vendor selection to partner selection, et cetera, um, uh, because obviously this is an asset that is being built on your behalf, and, and we have to operate it you know, uh, long after the, the construction period is, is, is over, right? So we have to have a, 
a guest experience lens on that. We have to have a, an operational lens on it as well. Mm. Uh, and quite often there's um, some debate about whether you have a solutions-led approach whereby you've got vendors who are developing technology to apply into a venue or whether you actually develop what your brief or program is that you want to take then to vendors for them to respond to. What happened on Sofa Stadium? Well, I think it, it, it started off um, in the very traditional manner where a design is, is put together. Um, it, it may be somewhat in a vacuum as you're trying to answer the, the macro challenges uh, of the project for ownership. Uh, and then it very quickly comes down to uh, the technology components. I think uh, in an earlier session, Scarpy mentioned this building is unique because we designed it starting around the, the video board. Yeah, I, I think um, th th these buildings are always designed around a performance specification, right? That, that the designers, both the architect and the engineers that, that undertake that, uh, who have tremendous experience designing these sorts of buildings, they have a point of view of what that performance specification should be. Mm -hmm. um, but it really doesn't get down to, you know, how do those, all those systems integrate, right? And um, how do you want to uh, partner with the right uh, companies and partners to help you sort of, you know, uh, uh, really amplify uh, the infrastructure that you have in the building? Uh, the performance specification doesn't get to that point, right? And, and so, um, you know, the, the building was, it's, it's sort of interesting, we have this enormous video board at SoFi Stadium uh, that we're just about to start building. It's about 70,000 square feet of LED. Uh, it's, it's shaped like an Oculus. We have LED on the inside and the outside of it. And it's such a, a, a big component of the stadium. It was the first thing that was designed because literally the structural steel of, of the canopy of the roof had to account for the weight of the board. So it was the first thing that was designed, but it's the last thing that's going to be built. And it's literally the last component that's going to light up in the building. Um, and so uh, the coordination around, uh, around all of that is incredibly important. And, and a component like that that really hasn't been constructed before, uh, you, you have to rely on your partners. Um, uh, you know, we had... We had uh, an enormous amount of time that we spent on the, the pre-bid and bid process for, uh, for something like that because there are very few companies in the world that can, that can build it. And then you have to be very comfortable with your partner because you're asking them to do something that they haven't done before. Um, and, and you have to put their trust uh, in their expertise. So you gotta, you gotta find the right partner. It's not just about dollars and cents. But in a project like this, where you you're you're sort of reinventing a lot of those components, you 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 really have to spend a lot of time with them and get comfortable. I think in a traditional model, uh, when we have that design, it, it's broken up into buckets, into big packages, and those are typically uh, bought out by general contractors to defer risk and goes through a very uh, quick process. Um, when we came into the project, we realized um, early on that you know pretty much the plans from the last project were kind of updated. Uh, and, and it really didn't conform to this vision that Scarpy had uh, with his consumer product background about how do you actually influence and, and elevate and transform the guest experience to the next generation. Um, and it required some thought process. Uh, technology has always gone through ongoing convergence and transformation, but it, it's really about kind of breaking down those uh, buckets, those silos. And, and getting those systems to integrate. So you know, we talk about in the tech world all the time about things moving to the cloud. Some of that hasn't transitioned when you look at a distinct system and somebody says, I just need you to build this system and I need, mature, need to make sure that it works on day one. We have to look at it um, as we sit in that design process. We have to look at it going forward. How do we really want it to work and we work effectively and then accomplish the goals of the guest experience vision that Scarpy articulated. Once we had that vision, then um, in a process that Legends refers to as the 360 process, we started to look at it from all angles. And how do you actually uh, engage you know, multiple disciplines at the same time? So when you're procuring something, 
you're also having a conversation about partnership and sponsorship and how are we really building these things that make sense both for our, our partners, uh, for our ownership, uh, and make sure it makes sense within the construction process, the budgeting process, uh, and to be able to deliver to that performance specification that Scarpy mentioned. Okay, that sounds good. The Oculus sounds like it's going to be absolutely, absolutely amazing, yeah. And the opening date for the venue is? Uh, first event, July 25th. Um, so we're hosting a, a two-day concert series with uh, Taylor Swift. So we look forward to that. We, we know she, uh, she puts on a, um, an unbelievable show and, and um, it'll, be, it'll be one of these opportunities for us to, to make sure that we can put into play all of the things that we've been planning uh, from, uh, from a digital standpoint and from a technology standpoint in the, in the stadium as well. I think, you know, we talked about this design process and historically these buildings from an engineering standpoint have, about, have been about, you know, make the, the sort of blocking and tackling of mechanical, electrical and plumbing. And, and there are two systems now in these buildings that you absolutely have to get right and you absolutely have to design them in from the very beginning. That's IP, uh, uh, a converged network to basically drive everything in the building and wireless, right? Uh, and without those two things, you just don't have a, m a modern venue anymore. Uh, and so I think those were the things that we were focused on in those early days uh, to make sure that uh, a design that was really a performance design became a converged design so that we can manage all of the IP networking, we can, we can secure our, our, uh, our various systems that, that operate that building. Um, and, and then that we can then have a foundation, a platform, if you will, for us to deliver that digital guest experience on top of. Yeah, so that's about getting your infrastructure right so that you can then plan for opening, but also, I guess, for the future, you've got some uh, future briefing built into the systems as well. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that, that's always a, and, and I mentioned wireless, and I think this is sort of the, it's the most rapidly developing, uh, uh, impactful uh, uh, infrastructure that we have in the stadium, I would say, is that the demand basically for mobile data uh, is so incredibly rapid. It's, it's hard for you to sit today and project out five years and uh, understand where basically it's going to go and thus what sort of infrastructure you have to des design into the building. And, and my recommendation is at the very earliest stages of design, uh, as, an, as an ownership uh, in concert with the people that are helping you build, you have to go out there and educate yourself. You have to talk to the, the Cisco's of the world. You have to talk to wireless carriers really uh, uh, at the very beginning of your, uh, of your phase so that you can understand uh, how you basically start designing the venue around the infrastructure that you need mm -hmm. and not, not vice versa. Because my point is that the infrastructure um, for wireless and for IP, these are critical, mission critical systems and they have to be thought uh, like that when you, when you design them. And, and you're looking at that, Scarp, as part of this project, not only in the stadium, but across the three venues in one that are under the canopy and across the rest of the 300 acres, uh, mixed use development at the same time as we're building this. Yeah, we have, I, it's an interesting project. It, it's really, it's the second largest real estate development project in America, in addition to being the largest stadium um, in America that we're building. Um, and so uh, it poses challenges, but also these opportunities because mm -hmm. we have, you know, an, an incredibly technology dense building, right? We have, we have a data center with 140 racks, right? Uh, uh, that is a modern, you know, uh, uh, data center that meets like every single California code uh, for running a commercial data center. Uh, which means that we have this opportunity to really power the technology across this 300 acres from this uh, this very purpose-built, technology-dense building. So, so it's 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 an, it was an opportunity for us to think about how can the stadium basically influence the technology infrastructure around it.
And, and then from a guest experience, really from a media standpoint perspective, how can you uh, radiate out uh, content, if you will, from the stadium into the 300 acres, uh, not just confine it within the, within the stadium itself? That's an interesting point, and certainly you mentioned Taylor Swift, so in terms of game day, but also other events at the stadium and across the, uh, the, the whole district that is being developed and the deployment of technology. Can you give us a few hints as to what the uh, customers and the visitors that come to uh, Laysed will start to experience from a technology uh, aspect? Yeah, I, I, and, and we'll reveal many of these components um, at a later date, but it was important certainly when I was hired for us to take a look at the role of technology for our guests. Um, and uh, coming from the Walt Disney Company and, and, and observing how they do things at the parks and, and how they have integrated technology for the benefit of that experience, right? Uh, but not technology for technology's sake, but you know, solving problems that we know are, are friction points. They are, uh, they are uh, things that uh, we wanted to make sure that we could address with technology. And so uh, that's everything from how you manage your tickets, how, you, uh, how, how transportation works in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which is incredibly important, right? Understanding how to get to the stadium, what our options are, uh, uh, parking, uh, 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 managing parking, and uh, what I call sort of taking a lot of the uncertainty out of a visit to our an event, right? Because if you, if you go to the Coliseum, which is where, the, for example, the Rams play right now, there's a lot of uncertainty around your visit there. How long is it gonna take me? What's the traffic gonna be like? Uh, where on earth am I gonna park, et cetera? So we think there's a real opportunity to focus on those, uh, those basics that we know are impactful for our guests. Uh, but we can only do that with the right infrastructure. Mm. And so, you know, from a classic sort of networking layering stack, we, f we focused on those things first to make sure that we can deliver that guest experience on top of it uh, for, uh, for our guests. But, but we look at guest experience as a curb to curb to curb experience. It is a, it is a full day, if you will, that you are in our care as a, as a guest, and we want to make sure that our digital applications, our digital signage in the building, uh, the, the digital out-of-home uh, informational network that we have across Hollywood Park are sort of reinforcing that, right, and that it's coordinated. Great. Uh, and where does sponsorship and sort of brand value in terms of technology and partnership fit into the equation for the venue you guys are developing? Well, I think it... it it's holistic, right? Every partner that is, is um, it, being part of the project um, is, uh, we go through a conversation with them and we really look at what are they doing? Uh, what can they do uh, across their entire product set for the project? And really trying to find that intersection where the value uh, equation for them just is incremental uh, rather than just making it a transaction. Um, Scarpy mentioned Cisco, and so they're a partner that we're, we're leaning on for not only that IP foundation, but really to be able to drive uh, the multimedia assets around the, the venue, around the campus, uh, to be able to kind of connect everything. And I think most importantly, as we look at the guest experience, it's also how do you secure that environment, right? How do you protect the consumers and the fans uh, when they come on property? When we talk about this converged design, um, it, there's a lot of responsibility uh, because you're, you're, you're requiring all of these different systems to work together. And there's been several cases where uh, one, one system is compromised and it causes issues for uh, data loss or, or even just challenges with, with operations uh, of uh, of different assets in the building. So we want to make sure that we have the right partners to kind of engage all that. And we want to make sure that they're engaging, um, that is highly relevant to them, uh, so that we can help use the, 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 the client's assets to tell their story and really build a partnership rather than just a transaction of, I'm going to buy your stuff and uh, let's do a trade deal. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can build a project this complex by leaning on vendors, right? You need, you need engaged partners that are with you every day, that are invested in your outcomes, right? That, that they're there uh, uh, in the trenches with you, so to speak, solving technical problems. Uh, quite honestly, uh, helping us basically uh, get the most out of the infrastructure that we're putting into it. Um, and, and, and that does not happen unless you have uh, uh, an engaged party on the other end, right? That is after something more than just, you know, the, the transactional deal that you had. Um, and, and, and that's something that I, I, I believe very strongly in, right? Uh, because uh, it's, it, you know, projects like this become, you know, showcases that, that are uh, as important for our partners as they are for us, right? And in terms of the partners you've selected and the range of um, technology that needs to be applied, have you sort of looked at best in class and how those relationships are forged? Or have you tried to build um, fewer, deeper partnerships in what you put together? I think it's a little bit of both, right? We, we as Scarpia mentioned, uh, the scope and scale of this project is massive. A and uh, the challenges, the, you know, breaking new ground and entering into areas that it just things have not been done before. It requires some unique partners. It requires people that are gonna go all in with you. Um, and, and so there's a best of breed component to that. Um, I think Cisco's a great example of a, uh, of a leader in their class. Um, you know, there's many others that are just that way, but it's also about balancing um, and making sure that you're, you're, you're being smart about how you're spending your capital dollar um, and, and looking at how you build a partnership um, with sponsorship revenue so that you can look at the total value equation. How am I, uh, what kind of technology am I getting? How does it fit to that performance specification? Uh, let's look at the, uh, the cost of ownership uh, around the, the product set, uh, making sure that it's competitive, not always the, the lowest cost item. Uh, and then let's make sure that we have a robust partnership that meets their expectations and meets the owner's expectations that you have uh, some sponsorship revenue coming in there. It doesn't necessarily always need to be the case, but it's a big mm -hmm. component to, uh, to kind of building out the, the best in class uh, capability that you can bring. Um, and there's, there's some folks that are out there that are going bleeding edge with some technologies and we have to actually pull back and say, that's great, we want to be there. Uh, we mentioned the wireless space that's in a constant state of flux and uh, rapidly changing, but you know, we're, we're being smart about making sure we're servicing well on day one uh, and able to future-proof and transform as we go into uh, day two and beyond. Okay, that's a really good insight in terms of um, engagement and technology on what is uh, probably the world's most groundbreaking pro sports project. Right now, I'll open the floor up to, to questions. So uh, if you guys have got anything you'd like to ask Scarpy or Brandon, then please fire away. Any questions from the floor? Put your hand up, please, if you've got a question. We didn't cover all the details. <laughs> I had a quick question. Go on, David, yeah. Um, it was, um, we, we had a session earlier, I don't know if you, you saw it, um, talking about the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And you touched on it in this session, this, this idea of future-proofing and how you build that flexibility into, um, into, the, into the project. Um, can you just explain a little bit more about how you go about that when you're potentially dealing with technologies that we don't yet know what they, what they will be. How, how flexible in, in the plan, in the building, in the way that everything is designed can you, can you afford to be? Um, it, it's, it, it, it is a very, you know, it's a very difficult thing. None of us have a crystal ball uh, for sure that, that, that can guide us in that. You know, there are, there are things that um, are very expensive to do in a, in a build like this. Um, if you know your networking stack, the, the sort of layer zero and layer one, which is the, 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 the conduit work that, that, you know, that you pull your, your fiber and your, um, and your copper into, those are things that we try to be as, I guess, prescriptive as we can be, uh, uh, as the budget allows. 
uh, once you got your fiber uh, foundation in the building, uh, there's an enormous amount of cap capacity there that's dormant, right? Uh, and that is something that is always continually improving. Uh, we have uh, in this building enormous uh, capacity in our IP networks uh, because we are buying sort of the, the latest generation. We're putting the you know, the Wi-Fi 6 uh, uh, wireless generation in the building as well. And so we, we try to push, if you will, as we, as we specified. And, and we are actually in, these, in this window that we're building the stadium, we're hitting a couple of these technology waves at a, at a very interesting time. Um, Wi-Fi 6 is another one. We talk about 5G. Uh, that's another sort of technology wave that is uh, not quite there, but is something that we have to, you know, uh, take take to, into account. There's a bunch of things happening on the broadcast side uh, that are really, really interesting. Resolutions are rising. Uh, we are building this stadium to uh, to a 4K HDR standard. Uh, we need an IP backbone for broadcast now, rather than the the sort of old tried and true uh, baseband back, uh, infrastructure. So there's a lot of those sorts of things that uh, when we push it from a design perspective, we, we sort of catch the, the five to seven year window rather than maybe the two to three year window. Um, but uh, other than that, the only thing I can say is uh, try to invest as much as you can in your, in your sort of your, your basic uh, conduits and fiber uh, plants. And is that something that you base uh, I mean, how much how much risk is involved in something like that in trying it's to a, predict? It's it's cal it's calculated risk, right? Um, and so I wouldn't say that. Like for example, on the broadcast plant side, uh, we are buying equipment that's on the market, right? Uh, it's currently only deployed in very few select you know uh, broadcast environments, but the companies that we talk to. Uh, uh, are eager basically to put that into play in, in, in these sorts of applications. So, so I would say that it's a calculated risk because it hasn't necessarily been done in venues, but there are uh, deployments of that technology that exist, right? And do you also uh, build in physical space for what comes in the future? Then you've actually got the power infrastructure, you've got the space for the servers and the cabs and the wiring to go into the building? As much as we can, right? And this is where it becomes really difficult, right? Because it's hard for us to uh, say what's going to be needed. And once a building is designed and the and the interiors have been laid out, uh, it can be very hard for you to find more space if you need to expand some of that. Mm -hmm. So you 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 try to you try to uh, uh, do the best that you can there. Uh, I will say that uh, we thought that infrastructure was pretty uh, uh, generous when we first saw the design, but as we've gone through uh, procurement, actually designing these systems that go in, uh, we can quickly see the, the, uh, just, just sort of how it winds up on itself. And I think it's always very hard for you to allocate space in, a, in an expensive building for for those sorts of things, and you sort of you fall back on this. Well, we we just hope it gets denser, the technology, so that yeah. the next wave just doesn't take as much physical space. Okay, that's a, a great note to end on. I think. Thank you very much to Scarpy and uh, and to Brandon. Thank you. Thanks,